In the last stream, we began work on trying to get the creative fluid tank from the create mod, which we can make in a tier five blood altar if we have one regular fluid tank from create and one million life points. Basically, what we did in the last stream is we set up at this tranquility altar down here, which now gives us even more LP every single time we use the sacrificial knife. And right at the end of the last stream, we got ourselves our first Tartaric Gem and the Sentient Sword, allowing us to fill that Tartaric Gem with wills. Of course, we get the wills by killing mobs with our sword. The idea being that in order to get this guy right here, the Sanguine Reverter, which is required in order to get the weak blood shards, which we need in order to upgrade our blood altar to tier four, we have to get a minimum of 350 will. Right now we have the Petty Tartaric Gem, which can only hold up to 64. We are gonna have to upgrade to the Common Tartaric Gem in order to hold the 350 required to make the Sanguine Reverter. So what I've gone ahead and done between streams is I have killed enough mobs to get our will quality here up over 60, because 60 will is what we need in order to upgrade our current Petty Tartaric Gem to a lesser Tartaric Gem, which is able to hold up to 256 will. And then once we have that, all we'll have to do is kill a, kill enough mobs in order to get 240 will into our lesser Tartaric Gem, at which point we can then upgrade that to a common Tartaric Gem and begin working towards getting enough will to get the Sanguine Reverter. That's part of the plan for today's stream. Before we get started with that, there are a couple of other things that I would like to do. First things first, whilst I was killing mobs to get this Petty Tartaric Gem up to a will quality of over 60, I did get this reward right here. It says reward received by completing advancements in Coral Tombstones. Uh, right here, I got the uh, Bone Crusher achievement for killing 50 undead creatures. And so I'm not quite sure what we're going to get out of this. We got Curse of Bones 3. Chance to apply Bone Shield when hit. Okay, <laughs> we'll drop that in the system for now. But um, there are a few things I want to work on today. The first thing that I would like to work on today is I would like to work on getting a basalt generator up and running. The basalt generator is kind of like a cobblestone generator, but it generates different ores. Specifically, it generates some nether ores, like nether quartz here, that right now we're not getting automatically. At the moment, if we want to get more nether quartz, which we're going to need if we're going to expand out our refined storage system, we would have to go through to the nether, mine the nether quartz manually, and bring that back through to our base. Whereas if we set up a basalt generator, which again, is just like a cobblestone generator, but instead of using water and lava, it uses lava and blue ice with soil soil beneath the center block where the ores are generated. And this not only generates nether quartz, but if we click on uh, show all recipes here, it also generates basalt as the name would suggest. And more importantly, we also get gold and ancient debris, AKA netherite. The gold is especially important because right now, whilst we are getting gold, from our regular ore setup, gold is much rarer than basically everything else that we're getting. For example, we have got quite a bit of iron. We don't have that much at the minute because we used a bunch of it to make steel in a previous episode. But we have, for example, 1,200 copper, whereas we only have 213 gold. So it's much harder to get gold from our current setup than it is copper. And I think one way we can rectify that is via the use of a basalt generator, which also just happens to give us nether quartz, uh, netherite, and cobalt as well. So the only tricky part about setting this up is getting the blue ice. But thankfully, I don't think that's going to be too difficult for us to do. There is a quest right here under the food quest line, which gives you a small water freezer as a reward for getting a snowball. It says to get snow, place water near a Britannia Pure Daisy. It will slowly turn into snow. So you can do this. Uh, you can obviously get a, um, a Pure Daisy, place down a block of water next to that Pure Daisy, and that will transform it into a block of snow that you can then pick up with a shovel to get regular snowballs. However, I think we can kind of circumvent all of that and just make the small water freezer. Because to make it, we just need six metal bars, which are just iron, and you get 12 from three, which is incredibly cheap, along with one water bucket and one fluid barrel, which is just yet more metal bars and a regular barrel there. So I think that's going to be significantly easier than running through the entire Batania setup. We will almost certainly get involved in Batania at some point in the future, but for now, I don't really think it's worth going through all of that just to get a free water freezer, especially when the water freezer is so easy to make. 
So all we need to do here is grab one of our buckets, quickly fill that up. I imagine the easiest way for us to do that is gonna be over at our sink, which I believe is right about there. Still no tail fruit, by the way. We are still working on this and we are gonna have to uh, continue to try and get a saturated tail from that cow. I do have a plan for how we can hopefully make that faster if we don't get one naturally by the time it's needed. But back over here, let's get one more batch of metal bars and boom, we get a small water freezer. So the idea here is that we can place down the small water freezer really anywhere. Uh, we do have to give it some power. Um, I think we should maybe still have some LV connectors in here. We don't, we've got some LV relays, but we are going to need a fresh LV wire connector to get this online. So let's just quickly do something like this and connect that up to here. Once it starts getting power, I believe at that point, all we need to do is put a bucket of water into there. And that should, I believe, begin to turn the water into ice, the ice into packed ice, and then the packed ice into blue ice at the cost of redstone flux. Now there's no GUI here, so you can't see what's going on, but you can see on the front there, there's a visual indicator when things change. You can see right now there is ice in there. The power is going down, so if we wanted to, we could give this a quick flick, and that should hopefully begin to fill that up a little bit. We should any second now see that ice turn into packed ice. There it is. And then with just a little bit more power, we should see that packed ice finally get transformed into blue ice. And there it is. Nice. So we can go ahead and right click. We get the blue ice out, which is perfect. I do believe at that point that we can then get our wire cutters and uh, just quickly snip this wire right here. It's already hard enough getting shocked by this wire every time we walk past. I don't want to add another wire to the mix. And so now really all we have to do is get our uh, bucket of lava and we could also do with getting another block breaker. And then it's just a case of finding a place to put this. People are reminding me that we did get a compact machine as a reward for an earlier quest that we completed. And so what we could do is we could place the compact machine down. And for those who don't know, um, the compact machines, you can take a personal shrinking device, right click it on the compact machine, and it basically teleports you into a little pocket dimension. This one is a large compact machine. And so this is nine by nine, I think in size. But uh, basically this is just an extra little room that we can utilize in its own little dimension. Now, to get items out of here, we would have to use something like an ender chest. However, we do have some spare ender chests here that we were gonna use previously for our, um, our nether lava setup. That ended up being a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. And so we do have some spare ender tanks here, um, not ender tanks, sorry, ender chests that we can use to, uh, to move all of the items that we're gonna get from this block breaker back through to the overworld. And so if we quickly just grab uh, some cobblestone here, what we should be able to do is drop down our blue ice, like so. I'm then not too sure if the lava needs to be flowing or not. Also, I'm a fool. I think we can pick this up with a silk touch pick. We can, thankfully. Um, this needs to be one block higher because in order for this to work, we do have to have, uh, I think it's soul soil underneath the, uh, the block that's gonna be generated. So the soul soil has to go like right here and then potentially, again, I'm not entirely certain on this one, but we might need flowing lava. No, maybe just regular lava. Regular lava does work, beautiful. Okay, so unlike a regular cobblestone generator, the lava does not need to be flowing. From there, all we have to do is place down our block breaker right about there. And then as per usual, that's gonna begin breaking all of the blocks placed in front of it. Uh, we do occasionally get things like netherrack, but uh, the things that we're after are things like gold nuggets. And I think much like we've done before, the easiest way for us to collect those items is gonna be with yet another item collector. Uh, the basic one should do the trick. And then from there, all we need is some kind of chest. Again, we can use an ender chest for now. So if we quickly grab two diamonds, we could place one ender chest down, let's say here for now, we can always move that in the future. Shift right click a diamond on like that to lock it to me. And then if we open it, we should see that it's empty whereas before it had uh, other people's stuff in it. And then back in here, we can place down the other ender chest, like so. Shift right click the diamond on to lock it to us. 
and then place the basic item collector on like that, at which point that should begin collecting everything uh, that is dropped by this generator here. Uh, the ender chest is slightly smaller than I was anticipating it would be. And so I think what I might do for the time being is maybe grab this uh, obsidian chest that we got as a question award and maybe just extract some of the items out of that uh, ender chest up and into here. Interesting. So I've been told by the Twitch chat that you can shift right click ender pearls or eyes of ender onto the ender chest to increase its, uh, increase its storage capacity. I don't know if there's a difference between using ender pearls and eyes of ender. So I shift right clicked one ender pearl on and that gave us an extra row here. If I do that again, do I get another row? Yeah, I get one more row. If I use an eye of ender, oh, it goes even bigger. Interesting. I do wonder how big you can go with that. Maybe that's the max. Oh no, 27 might be the max, like that. Now it's like the size of a regular, regular Minecraft chest. That's a nice buffer to have. One final thing that we can do here, if we want to be uh, good server players and uh, set things up so that the uh, server doesn't cry, because right now, if we leave our setup in its current state, what's gonna happen is, especially because everything is chunk loaded, this chest will fill up with stuff this chest will fill up with stuff, and then things will begin spewing all over the floor here, which will cause lag on the server. What we can do to mitigate that is uh, we can get ourselves a trash can from the trash cans mod. And I think if we put that down, let's say here, and then connect that up to here, if we add an advanced filter upgrade to this, we can then change the distribution mode Right now it's set to nearest first, which is actually what we want. We want it set to nearest first. Uh, we could change this to furthest, uh, as well as round robin, random, and nearest first. So nearest first is what we want. If it's set to nearest first, that means that all the items should get extracted from here and should try to go to the nearest inventory first. And then if they can't, because this is full, then they'll go through and over into the item trash can. So this should, in theory, stop any items from spewing over onto the floor because any excess items that we make will be deleted. Again, in the future, uh, we'll organize this and we'll get things sorted around into their correct storage drawers. But for the time being, this should begin to generate as nether quartz and gold that we can use uh, in the expansion of our refined storage system. Um, and the gold is going to come in particularly useful uh, later on when we want to upgrade our mob spawner here to be able to get a ton of mobs for the well of suffering. Now that that's taken care of, let's have a look at getting this next level Tartaric gem. I think we should have everything it takes to get this. We need one block of redstone, one block of lapis, and one diamond. So diamond, we can get. Uh, redstone and lapis we have in abundance, so we can get one block of redstone, uh, and we can get one block of lapis. If we go and throw all of those into the Hellfire Forge, diamond, lapis, redstone, and uh, petty Tartaric gem, Boom, we get ourselves a lesser Tartaric gem. Nice. So now all we need to do is kill some more mobs to level this up and then we can get the common Tartaric gem. Now we did get given this enchanted book here with looting three. And so that makes me think that if you apply looting to the sentient sword, that might get you more wills per mob kill. I don't know if that's the case, but I feel like we might as well give it a go. So right now this is at 42.4 on the will quality. If we kill one zombie, that goes up to 43.5 by the looks of it, killing one. So now if we add looting to this, hopefully every kill will give us slightly more will. It might have done. It's possible we killed more than one zombie there, but we did go up from uh, from 43 to 47. Yeah, it looks like we do get more will per kill with the looting on there, which should make this process a little easier. As a reward for making the lesser Tartaric gem, we do also get Sweeping Edge as well, which I feel like we should go ahead and, uh, and apply here. That's gonna make it significantly easier for us to kill zombies, especially over in the hidden realm dimension. Once again, if we kind of land up here, uh, the sweeping edge should hopefully allow us to uh, to hit 
a few more zombies here, although I'm still not sure if it's a great idea because there are just so, so many of them. Although, as I mentioned in the last stream, this sword does get more powerful the more wills you have in the Tartaric Gem, so this is getting stronger and doing more damage per attack. That didn't take anywhere near as long as I thought it would. We, uh, we have over 256 will in our gem now, and so we should be able to head back, and I think, as long as we have all of the items needed, uh, we should be able to upgrade this Tartaric Gem. So, to go from lesser to common, we need a diamond, we need the Tartaric Gem itself, a block of gold, and then an imbued slate, which for us is just a piece of stone in the Blood Altar with quite a few life points, but I think if we do this, that should probably get us there. We're gonna go all the way up to Blank Slate. Then if we leave that Blank Slate in, I might have to take it out and put it back in. Oh no, there we go, it's working. That's gonna take it up to a Reinforced Slate. And then I thought leaving it in would work, but it looks like it doesn't. So we'll take it out and put it back in again. And that's going to upgrade it, finally, to an imbued slate. Nice. So we'll grab that. We'll also go ahead and grab a block of gold and one diamond. And that should be everything that we need to upgrade our gem here from lesser to common. Nice, and this does carry over the will quality, so it's already at 206, and as a reward for this one, uh, we do get Sharpness 5. I really like the way this mod pack gives out these rewards here, because it makes uh, this process, which is sometimes in other mod packs, uh, quite, quite slow and tedious, it makes it significantly faster. So um, there is a bit of a weird bug. It looks like, I think it's when you swap dimensions, so whenever I go to the other dimension and come back, it, uh, it makes it seem like I have no levels, uh, but I think if I come over here and uh, just like hit and kill one of these zombies, yeah, I actually have 29 levels, so we can head back up to our anvil, and we can add on sharpness 5, which is going to take our attack damage up even further, and again, it does still continue to get even more damage with every extra will that you have in the common Tartaric Gem here. And so now, all we need to do is once again head back through to the Hidden Realm and try and get this up to, uh, I believe it was just 300. 350 is where we need it to be. And already, with just a few hits, it's up to 325. And there we go. Not too long later, we now have 1,024, a full common Tartaric gem. So now, all we need to do is head back, and we should have everything that we need to make ourselves the Sanguine Reverter. So for this, we need Shears, another Imbued Slate, uh, one of any stone, and an iron. So real quick, let's grab uh, one more stone. And once again, using our sacrificial knife, we should be able to get enough LP uh, into our blood altar here to make that imbued slate. There we go. At which point, all we need is a pair of shears, one iron ingot, and one stone, I believe. Let's take all that down to our Hellfire Forge. This time, we're going to put our Tartaric Gem over here. We're going to put in the stone, the imbued slate, the iron, and the shears. And boom, we have the Sanguine Reverter. So now... The final part here is getting the weak blood shard, which is the tricky part because in order to do this, we need the saturated towel. And as of right now, despite the fact that our cow has taken quite a few hits, we actually have yet to get any saturated towel, which is unfortunate. Now, I believe that what we might be able to do here, and I think I mentioned it a little bit in the last episode as well, uh, but we might be able to utilize the sigil of the green grove. That's this one here. This sigil uh, utilizes life essence, life points, in your blood network, so the life points that are in your blood orb, and uses those to increase the speed at which crops grow nearby. And I think unlike the other mod that we have installed that lets you shift to make things grow faster, I think if we use this, because it's from blood magic, it should also work in accelerating the speed at which we get the saturated tau as well. So to make this, we are going to need a growth regent, uh, and for that, we're going to need two saplings, one sugar cane, and one sugar. None of that should be too difficult. We do have a couple of oak saplings in our system, and of course, we do have quite a bit of sugar cane over here. We can craft one of those down into regular old sugar. And then down by our alchemy table, as per usual, we can go one, two, three, and four, with uh, a blood orb, of course, and a few more life points in the blood orb. There we go. We still have some arcane ashes left from the first time we used this. 
And the only other thing we need to make this happen is a reinforced slate. Once we have the reinforced slate, we right click with the arcane ashes. Then we right click with the regent. And then finally with the reinforced slate. And boom, we have a sigil of the green grove. Nice. So now I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if we get our divination sigil here, we've currently got 2,288 LP in our blood network. If we take the blood magic guide here, uh, we should be able to uh, hold control to get to the section about the green grove. The Sigil of the Green Grove is an item that has multiple uses. Crafted in an array with a growth regent and a reinforced slate, the Sigil can use your soul network's LP to nourish and grow nearby plants. So it's currently deactivated. If you shift right click, it becomes activated. And there we go, it killed the cow. I'm gonna deactivate it real quick. The cow died real fast. Uh, people did tell me that I can be the entity. It's like I can be the one to, to get this to turn. It will deal damage to me, but that's fine. Uh, unfortunately, we are dead now. So if I try this, and then how much Lamin LP do we have? Not many. Um, real quick, actually. I know I've just <laughs> planted that again. I'm going to have to replant it. But uh, if we go and put our blood orb into the blood altar... That should start filling up our, our blood network. It does, and we can also give a, a little sacrifice ourselves, and uh, maybe even kill a few of these zombies as well. With the old dagger of sacrifice. So now we've got 20,000 LP in our system, which I think should be fine. I don't think that the Grove Sigil uses that many life points. So now, standing atop it, if we shift right click, we should take some damage. But in doing so, we should speed up the growth of the Tau fruit and hopefully increase our chances of getting the saturated Tau. We've done it. There we go. Beautiful. We have one saturated Tau. So now the final thing we need is the alchemical reaction chamber up here. For this, we need three stone, two blocks of iron, one furnace, one blood orb, which we will get back, and then two more imbued slates. And boom, we have an alchemical reaction chamber. Nice. So let's go ahead and drop that down for now right over here next to our Hellfire Forge. And then in here, we drop in our sanguine reverter. We drop in our saturated tau. And after a couple of seconds, we get two weak blood shots. Nice. So with these, what we can do is we can simply craft them with stone. Like so, and one stone plus one weak blood shot gets you eight large bloodstone bricks. We only need four large bloodstone bricks. Those go up atop of these uh, stone brick pillars, one block above the uh, the glowstone. And now all we need in order to upgrade this to tier four is some more runes. In fact, I think we might have a few runes over in the system. We do, we have 11. That's definitely not gonna be enough because I think we need seven for each side. So I think we need 28 uh, runes in total to be able to, uh, to upgrade this fully to tier four. And we can kind of set our sights now on potentially looking at getting a tier five altar. If we're gonna get that tier five altar, we are going to need four beacons, which requires four nether stars. And so to get four nether stars, we are obviously going to have to defeat four withers. And to get four withers, we're going to have to get a bunch of wither skeleton skulls. Now, thankfully, we do already have two wither skeleton skulls available to us. These two we actually managed to get over in the hidden realm. Uh, the portal that we set up over here a few episodes back had multiple wither skeleton skulls in it. And in fact, if we uh, head on through in here, there is still one more door that door right there that is locked. And so I'm thinking potentially there could be another Wither Skeleton Skull in there. And if there is, that could save us a tremendous amount of time fighting Wither Skeletons in the Nether trying to get the third Wither Skeleton Skull. If we're gonna open that door, we need another Iron Key. We did thankfully get most of the Iron Keys initially for free. However, we are now out of Iron Keys, but as luck would have it, you can actually craft these Iron Keys in the Hellfire Forge and one imbued slate later, that should be everything that we need. So we still have our common Tartaric gem, which is full with 1,024 will. 
And so over in here, we can put in one block of redstone, two iron ingots, one imbued slate, and of course the tartaric gem on the right. And then slowly but surely, that is going to produce another iron key. And hopefully inside of this last door, there is at least one more with a skeleton skull. If there isn't, there's a possibility that we could just make another portal. I don't know if that would generate a different dimension or not. I think it will. But uh, for the time being, let's quickly just check in here. Okay, so that room didn't have any Wither Skeleton Skulls in it, which is not great. However, we do still have a Wither Skeleton Spawner in like the library looking room over there. And so I'm thinking what we might be able to do is if we can maybe lure this gigantic horde of zombies into one of these rooms temporarily, then maybe we can leave the room, hopefully blocking them in, although they do seem to be spewing out at an alarming rate. Uh, let's try and get the rest of them in maybe like this room over here. There might just be too many of them. There are so many zombies here. I have my zombie sounds like turned right down using the sound muffle mod, but there are a staggering number of zombies and some of them are surprisingly fast. Look at that, they just, <laughs> they overflow right through the wall. I do not understand. So Chet's wisdom has prevailed here. And what we've done is we've actually picked up the Wither Skeleton Spawner, which was hidden uh, inside the, the wall behind some bookshelves in there to that library room. And my plan initially was going to be to get one more Wither Skeleton Skull. I was then going to use that to spawn in one Wither. Once we had one Wither, we could then look at getting some Cursed Earth. So Cursed Earth is super nifty in that it is a block that allows mobs to rapidly spawn on top of it. So Cursed Earth is made using dirt and a Wither Rose. And for those who don't know, you get a Wither Rose when a Wither kills another mob. So my plan was to spawn in the Wither, have the Wither kill some other mobs, for example, some of our zombies from our zombie spawner here. That would get us some Wither Roses. We could then use those Wither Roses to get the Cursed Earth, and then we could use that Cursed Earth potentially in the Nether to generate a bunch of Wither Skeletons that we could then try and automatically farm to get Wither Skeleton Skulls. However, we can kind of circumvent a lot of that by just utilizing the Wither Skeleton Spawner that we've been given here, and in a fairly recent update to Cave Factory, we do now have the Mob Grinding Utilities mod in the pack, which is going to help us a ton here because this guy, the Mob Masher, is okay by default at uh, killing mobs. However, there are a bunch of upgrades you can make for it, including the Mob Mashing Beheading upgrade and the Mob Mashing Looting upgrade. Both of these are fairly easy to make. Uh, the beheading upgrade just requires iron and gold, basically, and the looting upgrade just requires gold and lapis. And if we put 10 of each of these into a mob masher, that mob masher is going to generate a ton of Wither Skeleton Skulls in a very short period of time with very few Wither Skeletons. And because, much like our zombie spawner, this spawner here uh, is from Apotheosis, we can, just like with our zombie spawner, add things like sugar to it, we can add clocks to it to increase the number of Wither Skeletons that spawn uh, and decrease the amount of time between each spawn as well. And so I think this is definitely going to be a much easier way of doing what I was going to try and do with Cursed Earth. And so real quick, in order to make the mob masher, it's a fairly simple recipe. It requires three diamonds, one block of iron, one block of redstone, two iron swords, and then some iron spikes. The iron spikes are also fairly easy. They require blocks of iron with iron swords. And so in total here, we are going to require uh, eight iron swords, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That should be enough to make two sets of iron spikes. And then finally, the mob masher is just missing one block of redstone. Nice. So the mob masher is pretty simple in that all it requires to work is a redstone signal. It doesn't actually require uh, any form of power. And so if we were to put it down, uh, for instance, on top of a redstone block, it will instantly start spinning. And if we walk into it, uh, you start taking damage. So by default, it doesn't do a ton of damage. We are wearing diamond armor here, but it's not massively powerful. However, as I mentioned before, there are these upgrades available. And if we right click on the mob measure here, you can see that there are slots for each and every one of them. Uh, you can put up to 10 of each of these in each slot. And if you do put the maximum in, these do become quite powerful. Now, we are getting a little low on iron. We've only got 31 iron ingots in the system. So we might not be able to put all 10 looting upgrades in. That would require 100 iron. Gold wise, we did set up our compact machine over here. And so we do have a bunch of gold nuggets ready to go. In fact, if we uh, lower our GUI scale temporarily here, we should be able to uh, organize this chest and then just kind of pull out a lot of the gold nuggets and drop those into the system. The reason that we're so low on iron 
is that uh, ever since we upgraded to the refined storage system here, ever since we swapped over from the simple storage network mod, uh, we've not actually been generating any more resources over here, or at least we've not been importing the resources. As you can see over here, things are kind of backed up uh, and overflowing because before we had this uh, import cable that was pulling things into the simple storage network, but now we no longer have the simple storage network. And so we do need to replace those cables with uh, importers from refined storage, which do the same thing of pulling items uh, from inventories into the refined storage system. Uh, before I do that, though, I think for now, what we might be able to do is just grab some iron ore out of this chest and temporarily just manually process that through our emerald furnace. While those are smelting away, we should be able to uh, start making at least some of these upgrades here. We'll start with the beheading because I think that is going to be the most important. And I think we'll try and make five of these. We've got one iron helmet. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, and five. We we'll need to do the same with gold. And then that should be everything that we need to make five of these beheading upgrades. Another thing we're going to want is sharpness. Uh, sharpness is going to make it deal more damage and is therefore going to speed up the rate at which we can generate those mob heads. Uh, this does require even more iron, this time in the form of iron swords. Again, I would like to get five of these, uh, which means we're going to need another 40 iron to make that work. Thankfully, we do have a stack of iron smelting up over in here. We can add even more to that system. It is inefficient. We could, of course, double uh, our iron ore into iron ingots if we use the grinding wheels, but uh, in the interest of speed, we're just going to go ahead and smelt them for the time being. And 20 swords later, that again should be everything we need to make five of these mob mashing upgrades. Whilst I was making those, the Twitch chat did uh, very handily point out that uh, Smite is almost certainly a better upgrade than Sharpness if we're going to get, uh, if we're going to be killing with the skeletons, because Smite does affect undead mobs where the skeletons are undead. They do take more damage from the Smite upgrade. And so um, it might not have been worth it to spend so much of our little iron on the sharpness upgrade. I think Smite definitely would have been worth it, uh, given that it's just gold, redstone, and rotten flesh. We do have quite a bit of rotten flesh, and we can almost certainly go ahead and just make 10 of these Smite upgrades to max it out right from the uh, right from the get-go. We could add looting as well. Uh, we do have, I think, quite a bit of lapis. We do, and right now we're still doing pretty well on gold, so I see no reason uh, not to go ahead and grab 10 looting upgrades. And then just like with our zombie spawning room over here, um, I think we're also going to use vector plates to move the wither skeletons from wherever they spawn to the one centralized location that is the mob mesher so they can get killed and turned into mob drops, which again, uh, we will almost certainly be picking up with an item collector. Uh, again, the item collector, super easy for us to make. Uh, we will go with the advanced one just because it's not that difficult to make either. And so now we just need to set up a room within which we can put this spawner. All right, so a little bit of excavating later, and I've dug out this area, which is nine by nine by six. So it's nine long, nine wide, and uh, six tall. The reason for that is that going forward, if we're going to get a million life points to make the creative fluid tank, I think we're going to have to get a better way of generating LP. While we could do what we've been doing up until now, utilizing the Dagger of Sacrifice and the Sacrificial Knife, doing that to get a million life points is going to take a ludicrous amount of time. Thankfully, if we head on over to the Blood Magic quest line here, uh, there is this quest for the Well of Suffering. The Well of Suffering is another ritual from Blood Magic that uses a small amount of LP to kill mobs in a given area near the Well of Suffering. And in turn, it will basically take, uh, it will deal damage to the mobs in its area. And when it deals damage to those mobs, it will suck life points from them and put them in the altar. So basically, it's an automatic way of what we're doing with the Dagger of Sacrifice. It will automatically kill mobs, take their life essence, and use it to generate LP at the cost of a very little amount of LP, but the net benefit is more LP. That's what this space is for. And so essentially what I'm thinking is we can put this Wither Skeleton Spawner down in here, place down the Vector Plates, place down the Mob Masher, and then turn the Mob Masher on to get the Wither Skeleton Skulls for now, but then when we need the Well of Suffering, we can just turn the Mob Masher off. That will leave the Wither Skeleton Skulls here within the radius of the Well of Suffering. So the Well of Suffering will be able to use those Wither Skeletons. We could also potentially bring the Zombie Spawner down as well to even further increase the number of mobs being generated for that Well of Suffering, thus hopefully increasing the speed at which we can get to 1 million life points. And then after that, uh, we can 
turn the mod mesher back on to continue getting wither skeleton skulls because at some point i would like to complete uh, this quest down here to automate the killing of withers and of course if we're going to automate the killing of withers we are going to have to automate the generating of wither skeleton skulls so what we're going to do real quick is uh, probably make a third elevator because right now getting down into that hole is a pain in the backside so as per usual, we can craft our hemp down into string. We can craft our string into wool. 16 wool is the perfect amount for two elevators, although actually uh, we do only need the one. That is totally fine. We'll do something like this, get a third white elevator. And then from there, what we should be able to do is dig just kind of a little hole, a little access hatch over here like this. That's going to allow us to go straight from this uh, top area down to this bottom area without having to fly up and through uh, the altar there. Back up here, we should have almost everything it takes to make some more vector plates. We do, of course, have our sugar over here that we can craft down. And a minute ago, I did drop a stack of coal into our crushing wheels. And so we do have uh, a bunch of black dye ready to go in here. So back over at our crafting grid, uh, which I have just dyed black accidentally, but that's completely fine. Uh, we should now be able to craft up at the very least 81 vector plates here. And there we go, 84 vector plates. So we will go ahead and grab this guy. We might as well also grab a chest of some description. This gold chest seems like it'll do the job just fine. And I think what we'll probably end up doing is uh, just putting the chest like here with the item collector on top of it to collect all of the uh, the wares that we're going to get from the crusher. We can put the mob masher for now kind of over in this corner. In fact, we could probably put the mob masher right here if we did something like this. Again, it's going to make a bit of a pain to get out, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And uh, for now, we can just replace this with anything because we are going to cover this up with vector plates. Once again, if you uh, shift while placing these down, you will not be affected by them. Once all of those vector plates are down, uh, let's try and get to safety first because if I unshift, I'm going to get thrown into this mob masher. Let's add in the looting, beheading, sharpness, and smite upgrades to our mob masher there. Uh, let's also give us a bit more space real quick. We'll then go ahead and drop down our golden chest for now. Uh, we can really just put this... I think like right here, that should be completely fine. We'll put the item collector on top of it, like so. Uh, we should be fine. That radius doesn't go up like above to the upper floor. So we're not going to accidentally collect anything from the upper floor either. And then at that point, all we have to do is, uh, is actually drop down the spawner, which I will place up above this lovely piece of diorite right here, like that. We can then get rid of the diorite and we should see slowly but surely uh, with the skeletons being produced, being transported to the mob masher, and being killed and you can see already uh, we've got four with the skeleton skulls i think from four with the skeletons so things are going pretty well there uh, we can put a vector plate up on the top there just in case a with a skeleton does spawn on top uh, of course i have made a slight mistake here in that this should be a sideways facing vector plate okay so a little tweaking later i had to rearrange some of the vector plates we had here uh, to make sure that none of them pushed the with the skeletons like to the spawner like that uh, but as you can see the wither skeletons are spawning they are being killed and uh, they're getting killed instantly like as soon as they touch that mob masher the smite is kicking in and just insta killing them which is fantastic you'll see in here uh, that we have got 20 wither skeleton skulls already uh, as well as a bunch of necrotic bones withered ribs uh, and iron swords as well which i don't think are of particular use to us i don't believe that we can melt those down it might be possible that we could melt these down into iron although i think they might have to be fully repaired in order for that to work so i don't actually think that we can uh, really do much with these outside of void them. But uh, for the time being, we should be getting close to having enough wither skeleton skulls here to spawn in enough withers to get the four beacons required. And the good news is that we can actually use this exact same setup for the wither as well. We can just push the wither into the mob masher and that will actually generate the nether stars that we're after. I think we might want to put a bit of a roof on this so that if the wither does spawn, it doesn't fly up and it does actually get pushed over into the, uh, the mob masher. So mob grinding utilities does also add tinted glass, which is tough enough to withstand withers. Not that we necessarily need this because we do have our base claimed and FTB chunks, I believe, will prevent mob damage, including uh, damage from the wither. My thought process here, chat, is that what we should be able to do is kind of come down here, move over this way, and I think if we build the wither, Kind of like this 
Like when I put when I put this down, that should spawn a wither. And I'm fairly certain that wither should get pushed over to the mob masher. And again, because we have our base chunk, uh, our base claimed using FTB chunks, I'm fairly certain that no wither damage will be sustained. Okay. I think the wither there is actually getting caught. So it did it did break the uh, the vector plates, which is fine. We can replace those. Um I think what we've managed to do here is trap the wither in the glass. I don't think that the wither here is actually being killed by the mob masher. I think if it were to be killed by the mob masher, it would be much faster than this. This is quite possibly the most unsatisfying way to kill the wither that exists. Okay, so bad news is that uh, the wither can break blocks. And even better news is that it has begun breaking blocks. I don't know if we can do a lot about that. The... Oh, I, I kind of want to try and push it into the mob masher. Because that would do a good deal to, to kill it faster. But at the same time, I also don't want it to break the mob masher. It does seem to be a little bit disoriented here. Please, Wither Skeleton, I have bigger fish to fry than you right now. Oh no, my jetpack's out of juice! It's dead. Okay. So that was not ideal. But it did work. And we did manage to get one Wither Skeleton Skull. Uh, real quick, I do need to fix this stone wall. I should also put my jetpack on charge. Unfortunately, it is going to charge, I think, fairly slowly here. Just due to the uh, the speed of the charger. Although, actually, if I turn on my, uh, my diesel generator, which does still make a horrific sound, it might charge a little bit faster than it would otherwise. While that burns away, I'm going to hopefully, I'm going to turn that down. We'll leave it, like, on a low rumble in the background. Uh, while that does that, I think that we can get this system to work. I think we might just need to tweak it. So the vector plates seem a little ineffective at killing the wither. However, I think what we can do, again, if we turn to mob grinding utilities, is I think we can maybe use the mob fan, this guy right here. Not super difficult to make. The idea with this is that if you give it a redstone signal, which we can, of course, do with a good old-fashioned lever, is that it'll push a mob in a certain direction. So the wither doesn't do any damage when it explodes, thanks to the FTB chunk loading. However, it does deal damage when it shoots out. So my plan here is to place down the, the fan and turn the fan on. That should begin to push the wither. This time, we'll try and build it in such a way that it doesn't get stuck. And I'm hoping that we can use this fan uh, to push the wither towards the uh, the mob masher before it does any damage. And I'm hoping that the mob masher, uh, given that it has uh, sharpness and uh, smite, should be able to kill the wither fairly quickly. The Twitch chat has reminded me that we can add a redstone comparator to our wither skeleton spawner. That's going to give us redstone control of the uh, the spawner, which I think is going to be particularly useful here uh, because we're probably almost certainly going to want to turn it off whilst we are uh, spawning withers. So uh, if we just do that, yeah, without a redstone signal now, it's not active, which is perfect. So we're going to raise the tinted glass up by one. And I think I'm going to build the wither like just right next to the mob masher here. So it gets pushed directly into it. And we'll put the uh, the mob fan like right here with a lever beneath it. That should, in theory, push the wither right towards that mob masher, which should hopefully be basically an instant kill. Uh, somebody in the Twitch chat has just pointed out that we can, in fact, use these broken iron swords to make more sharpness upgrades, which I didn't think was going to work. But over here, if you put in broken swords, it does actually make these. And I think I'm going to go ahead and upgrade to 10 sharpness mob mashing upgrades just to make sure that our mob masher is dealing, dealing as much damage as possible and uh, is as likely as possible to kill the wither instantly because we want it to die basically as soon as it hits the mob masher. We don't want it dealing uh, any damage to uh, anything around it. Uh, it looks like we are just missing two iron swords. That is completely fine. And we might as well use the, uh, the broken ones here. Beautiful. Uh, so that should make the mob masher here basically 
as powerful as it can possibly be. Okay, so this is getting really horrible. <laughs> it's so janky. But basically, we have the mob fan on the wall here. We're going to turn that on. That's going to push the wither towards the uh, the mob masher, basically as soon as, it's, uh, as soon as it's ready. The explosion shouldn't do any damage. If it does happen to fire any shots, hopefully the uh, tinted glass here will absorb any of that damage. So I'm going to place down these three guys. I'm then going to turn this on and leave and put down the glass real quick before the wither spawns in. I'm fairly certain, actually, that I probably do have to put those wither skeleton skulls onto the actual soul sand itself and not just the wall behind it. So we'll do this. We will quickly leave. We will turn the fan on. We will do this. And hopefully, chat, if all is well, we should get our second nether star. The first one is here. We should get our second nether star much, much more easily than the first one. I've made the exact same mistake. I really didn't think that wither was going to spawn in the roof like it did. Although it has. Let's try free it a little bit. There we go. Okay. So the guy did do some damage. And I also died to my mob masher. Which may or may not have happened a few times now. Which is why we had to put a bed down. So we respawn uh, close to our spawner. Uh, thankfully we can regain our items by just right clicking this key on this grave right here um the chest did get destroyed uh, hence why there are now items just spewing everywhere hopefully we can uh, clear some inventory space out here and, and get most of that stuff back um we are gonna have to make a new chest but that is completely fine uh, we did though manage to get a second nether star and so we actually just need two more uh, and then we will have everything that we need uh, in order to get the four beacons uh, and then hopefully next time we can come back and we should be able to do the uh, the creative tank i think we'll have everything that we need at that point we'll set up the well of suffering we'll generate a million life points we'll hopefully set up an altar uh, that can handle a very large number of life points if not exactly a million and then uh, we will use those to uh, craft the creative tank the mistake we made there was not making this tall enough um, i really thought that uh, if the space was three high the wither wouldn't spawn in the roof it seems like that is not the case i think this time if we just break some of this glass and give the wither enough space to actually spawn in, that things should work. The fan did push the wither, so that part of the system works. Uh, we actually did get all of this stuff back, like nothing was actually destroyed. We actually do have the uh, the gold chest still uh, from before, so I can put that down and drop this guy uh, back on it like that to start picking everything, uh, everything up again. It is probably going to get destroyed again. Chat is right in that we can just move the uh, chest and the ender hopper out of the way, like that. So let's go in for wither number three. That one worked perfectly. And in an ideal world here, chat, we're going to go in for wither number four. Please. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. And chat, we have four nether stars with the ability, if we wanted to, to make more nether stars in the future. And so now, what we should be able to do is very easily, I think, craft up four beacons. One, two, three, and four. Uh, those four beacons go down on this level. Uh, I believe maybe on top of the stone bricks, although actually it might be where the stone brick is. Let me quickly check the blood magic guidebook here. If we go to blood altar... And then scroll all the way to the end. Yeah, so it's on top of the stone brick. The stone brick is not strictly necessary. So we could if we wanted to uh, get rid of the stone, uh, the stone brick underneath after the fact. And uh, we should probably also replace the, uh, the floor underneath it. But that is secondary. The good news now, though, is that we are basically ready to upgrade all the way to a tier 5 altar. Our current altar is still tier 3. However, uh, all we need to do now is make a bunch of blank runes. And we should be able to fill in all of the remaining uh, Dark Scoria Cobblestone here, and that will give us a Tier 5 Altar. From there, all we have to do is upgrade the runes to actually be able to craft the Creative Fluid Tank. Uh, there are two ways that we can do this. We could either put down a bunch of 
capacity runes. The capacity runes are going to obviously increase the capacity of the altar. It is possible. I believe 64 runes of augmented capacity gets you up to a million buckets worth of capacity. That could be doable. Uh, that would be a lot of obsidian, but we obviously have unlimited obsidian. It would also be a lot of iron, uh, but we should be able to get quite a bit of iron fairly easily. Uh, and then obviously we'd need a bunch of runes of capacity as well, which is even more iron. But again, that should be somewhat doable. Alternatively, we could increase the capacity a little bit, but not quite to a million, but then just set things up in such a way that we generate more life points than the Blood Altar uses, right? So if we can set up the Well of Suffering to generate more life points than the Blood Altar uses, then we don't need to worry about capacity. For example, if the Well of Suffering produces 100 uh, life points per second, and the altar is so slow that it only uses uh, 80 life points per second, that means that the altar will always be full, and all we would have to do is just put a fluid tank in, and eventually we'll get to a million life points that will create uh, a creative fluid tank. You don't actually ever have to have the four million in the blood altar at any given time, and so we'll probably try and strike a balance. We'll try and get a bunch of speed runes on there uh, to make the altar faster, but we'll also increase the speed of the wither skeleton and zombie spawners to try and get those to the point where they are spawning a ton of mobs, uh, allowing the Well of Suffering to produce a ton of life points so that hopefully we can both make the creative fluid tank in a fairly reasonable amount of time, like it's not going to take hours to craft, but also not have to craft up 64 runes of augmented capacity, which would take up a lot of resources. Before I go, I think it is going to be very sensible uh, for me to make at least one, if not a few, importers. Uh, the importers here are really not too difficult. Uh, they are made with the filtered import cables that we had before, along with regular refined storage cable and destruction cores. The destruction cores, uh, again, made with nether quartz and basic processes. The basic processes, really not too difficult to make. Um, I will try and make three of these, one for each of our resource generating chests, those being... Uh, this one here, which is bringing in nuggets, this one here, which is bringing in the redstone, the diamonds, the coal, and then this one over here, which is bringing in things like, uh, like cobblestone and whatnot. One, two, three. We are going to have to run some cable over to connect this up, but what we should be able to do fairly easily is just replace the initial uh, network cable from the Simple Storage Networks mod. So we'll get rid of this. We don't need that speed upgrade either. Uh, we are currently out of jetpack juice, <laughs> and we're also very full on inventory space, but basically we're going to stick these importers on the bottom of the chests. They work in basically the exact same way as the importing cables from the Simple Storage Network mod. Uh, we'll also do this one over here whilst we're at it and get rid of this guy. Uh, oh, no, this is for... Oh, this is for sand. Interesting. Okay, so we do need one more, actually, if we're going to do all of the uh, all of the chests. I didn't realize we had one extra there. So, boom, there is our fourth importer. As for cable, we currently only have six. That should not be a problem. We should be able to make some more cable, I think, fairly easily. We totally can. And so all we need to do here is drop down this last importer over here. And then all we have to do then is try not to break our entire system. <laughs> and at the same time, uh, connect up all of these importers background to the controller. And there we go. That is now connected up there. It runs, again, just round uh, through the back of the wall there, over and down, and connects up to all of those chests. And so now everything in here should, once again, uh, begin being imported. Because we did set the priority correctly, over here we set the priority of the external storage to be higher than the priority of the disk drive. This one is set lower. Everything should try and go into the draw controller first before it goes into our disk drive. So hopefully uh, these won't fill up too, too fast. I do kind of want to... Um, Redye my grid here. I'm not a huge fan of the black grid. Uh, blue is also not right, I don't think. I think light blue might be the default color. There we go. That's more like what I'm expecting to see. I keep walking over thinking my refined storage system is turned off when it's, uh, when it's set to black. Either way, I think that is going to about do it for today's stream. Next time, we'll come back uh, like I said, we'll work on the Well of Suffering. We will work on upgrading our spawners to hopefully make them crazy fast and hopefully get them to spawn a ton of mobs. Uh, between streams, we should hopefully generate a bunch more iron. Uh, the base is chunk loaded, so everything here will continue to run uh, basically 24 hours a day until the next stream. So hopefully when we come back, we'll have at least a couple of stacks of iron, maybe a few hundred iron. Uh, that'll hopefully allow us to get all of the different runes that we're going to need uh, to upgrade our Blood Altar to be able to craft the creative tank. The creative tank itself, from a uh, resource standpoint, is really not too difficult. Uh, the tank is just basically copper and glass. Uh, it, it's just the one million 
life points. It's going to be a bit of a pain uh, to actually get. And then, of course, once we've done that, and once we're done with the Well of Suffering, we can reuse the spawner downstairs for unlimited Wither Skeletons. I do have a plan on how we're actually going to automate the killing of Withers in a much less janky way uh, than we're currently doing it with by manually placing down um, all of the parts individually. Um, but yeah, that's basically the plan for next stream. Real quick, I'm going to go ahead and fill in these floor bits over here. And there we go. Those are now all full. Perfect. Uh, and with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.